The pancreas is an organ that resides deep in the abdomen. It rests against the backbone in front of two major blood vessels called the aorta and the inferior vena cava. It is also covered by the stomach and the liver. The pancreas is divided into three anatomical portions, the head, body, and tail. The head of the pancreas is surrounded by the duodenum, the part of the intestine that connects the stomach to the small bowel. The tail of the pancreas resides in the hilum of the spleen. The pancreas has two very important functions. Most of the gland is involved in producing the digestive enzymes that are collected in the main pancreatic duct and then emptied into the duodenum. These enzymes are involved in the digestion of fats, sugars, and proteins. There are also small microscopic groups of cells dispersed throughout the pancreas called the islets of Langerhans. These small groups of cells produce a variety of hormones, including insulin, that are released directly into the blood and help regulate a variety of different functions, the most important of which is keeping the blood sugar or glucose in a normal range. Glucose is the main source of energy for the body. A variety of benign and malignant tumors can arise in the pancreas, often in the head of the gland. Tumors in this area present a particular problem because the head of the pancreas is at an important crossroads where the pancreatic duct empties its digestive enzymes into the duodenum and the bile duct delivers bile from the liver and gallbladder. If a malignant tumor, such as a pancreatic cancer, arises in the head of the pancreas, it will often block both the pancreatic duct and bile duct, resulting in the patient turning yellow or becoming jaundiced. When the bile duct is obstructed by a tumor, bilirubin, a yellow substance produced in the liver, is no longer able to empty into the duodenum and be excreted and backs up in the blood and the patient turns yellow. This is often first noticed in the whites of the patient's eyes. Yellow jaundice is often the first clue that the patient has a pancreatic tumor. Weight loss and abdominal pain may also be symptoms of a pancreatic tumor. When these symptoms are present, the physician will order a CAT scan to look for a tumor or other important signs such as a dilated bile duct in the liver or a dilated pancreatic duct, both of which can be caused by tumor obstructing the ducts. If cancer is diagnosed, the physician will use the CAT scan and possibly a variety of other tests to stage the cancer and determine whether the tumor has spread beyond the pancreas. If it has not, the cancer is considered resectable and the patient is a candidate for an operation called the Whipple operation or a pancreaticoduodenectomy. The Whipple procedure or pancreaticoduodenectomy is a major operation that often takes between five and six hours. The patient is admitted to the hospital, prepared for surgery, and then put to sleep with general anesthesia. After the patient's abdomen is prepped with an antiseptic and draped appropriately, generally the operation is performed through a midline incision. Under certain circumstances, the operation can also now be done laparoscopically through four or five small incisions. However, most operations are still done through an open incision. Once the incision is made, the surgeon carefully explores the abdomen to confirm that the tumor has not spread beyond the pancreas and its surrounding area and therefore can still be surgically removed. Because the head of the pancreas is located so deep within the abdomen, many structures have to be divided before the tumor can be removed. The gallbladder is mobilized and the bile duct leading to the duodenum is divided. 
Next, the duodenum is divided to preserve the entire stomach as well as the pylorus valve and the first portion of the duodenum. This is referred to a pylorus preserving Whipple procedure. In some cases, the surgeon may perform a classic Whipple procedure where a portion of the stomach is also removed. The neck of the pancreas is divided, being certain that no tumor is left behind in the neck or body of the gland. One of the most important steps in this operation involves removing the pancreas and tumor from two important vessels that supply blood to the intestines and return it to the liver. These are called the superior mesenteric artery and the superior mesenteric and portal veins. Occasionally, if these structures are involved with tumor, portions of these important veins are also removed. This dissection is quite complicated and prolongs the operation. The proximal small bowel, called the jejunum, is divided, allowing the entire specimen to be mobilized and removed from the body. Once the specimen, consisting of the pancreas containing the tumor and the surrounding tissues, is removed, the reconstruction is then carried out in a stepwise fashion. Generally, the remaining pancreas is reconnected, or anastomosed, to the proximal small bowel in an end-to-side fashion. Next, several inches beyond the first anastomosis, the bile duct is reconnected to the jejunum. Finally, downstream from the bile duct anastomosis, either the duodenum or stomach is reattached to the jejunum depending upon whether a pylorus preserving or a classic Whipple has been performed. So, in summary, a Whipple operation, or pancreatical duodenectomy, removes a portion of the pancreas containing the tumor, the gallbladder and distal bile duct, and most of the duodenum, along with a section of small bowel or jejunum. The reconstruction includes anastomosing or reattaching the pancreas, the bile duct, and duodenum, or stomach, to the small bowel or jejunum. Patients undergoing this extensive operation are often placed in an intensive care unit for observation for the first 24 hours after surgery. The next day following surgery, the patient is gotten out of bed, often ambulated, and the nasogastric tube that is placed through the nose down into the stomach during the operation is removed. Many patients will start taking sips of water during the first postoperative day and usually will be discharged from the intensive care unit and go to a floor. The second day after surgery, patients often start taking liquids and as early as the third postoperative day may actually begin on solid foods. Drains are frequently left in place after the operation to collect any secretions that may be present after surgery. If appropriate, the two drains are removed on the fourth and fifth postoperative days. If a patient is done well with no postoperative complications, they may leave the hospital as early as the sixth or seventh day, but a hospitalization of about eight days is the average. After a recovery period of several weeks, the vast majority of patients will be able to resume a normal life. Depending upon the type of tumor and lymph node involvement, chemotherapy or radiotherapy or both may be indicated starting six or eight weeks after surgery.